Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you so much uh, for inviting me here today. It is a great honor for me to present part of my research work. So today I'm going to uh, share with you uh, what is about the you know, situation about the Korea's aging population. So Korea has been still kind of a young population. However, Korea's, uh, the speed of aging in Korea is quite fast than any other countries. So uh, I'm trying to show what has been just the, uh, the Korea experience and what is some government intervention or some of the, uh, the policy responses to the recent change in the Korea population. So first of all, I will just briefly uh, explain the, uh, the Korea's aging as a description. So this is the uh, picture what the Korea and the mass media is trying to circulate. So Korea's population aging uh, fastly. So right now we have just, we just passed the 14 percent kind of the threshold. So Korea just moved to the uh, aged society. However, the speed of aging is far faster than uh, any other countries, both the developing country and also developed countries. So by the time of 2060 or so, Korea is going to be one of the oldest societies in the world. So the projection is Korea will just surpass Japan, which is one of the oldest societies right now. So this slide shows the speed of aging. So Korea, just as I mentioned, Korea just entered an kind of aged society, so 15%. Uh, so it just took seven, uh, 17 years. So if we just look at uh, other advanced countries, these, some countries took more than 100 years old, but Korea just spent 17 years. And according to government projection, uh, Korea is going to enter a super aged society, which is 20% of the, you know, the uh, population is, uh, will be uh, 65 years old, and we expect it will be 2026, 20, but it will be just in the, the, uh, a little bit shorter, one or two years. So which means Korea is going to uh, handle this problem within very short, short time period. So I think China is going to also experience the same speed of aging as well. So many developing countries, on the one hand, it's kind of the fortune to live longer, but at the same time, from the government and society perspective, it's kind of a huge challenge. So this, uh, the speed of aging has been accelerated in Korea so by the combination of two factors. One is uh, the elderly live longer. And the, another problem is Korea has been experiencing very rapidly declining fertility rate, which means a fewer number of babies. So I will show you the next slide. So this is the uh, speed of aging, which means uh, Korea's kind of life expectancy is going to be longer and longer. So this year, uh, the average uh, Korea's life expectancy is 82 uh, years old. So. And this one, next one is the uh, men and women. So as you can see, uh, within just a few decades, actually, the Korean people tend to live longer and longer, more than 20 years or so. And uh, like many other countries, women just live uh, longer than men. But this problem has been uh, further uh, worsened by the declining fertility rate. So like many uh, developing countries, Korea had pretty high fertility rates until 1960s or 1970s. Around the 1960s, Korea's fertility rate was around the six. In 70s, or kind of uh, five or 4.5. So this one is the uh, Korea's uh, fertility rates. Uh, so Korea's fertility rate is declining so dramatically. So the, as you can see from here, uh, Korea just had, uh, uh, if we just look at 2000, uh, actually this one, 2005, here we have kind of 1.08. Right now it's a slightly just a rebound, but Korea was one of the uh, bottom country um, in terms of fertility rate. But uh, when I was kind of the, uh, my generation, actually the government is trying to have a strong uh, family control policy. So government strongly encourage that two babies are good enough. So if they have, uh, my father's generation, so they have uh, two babies, the government offer many tax benefits and some good health care benefits. And during the 1980s or so, the government proposed two is enough, just one is kind of enough. But all of a sudden, uh, Korea had kind of very rapidly declining fertility rates. So right now, what government trying to argue, okay, more babies good for our society, and also uh, children can just learn children can be socialized within family, with their kind of siblings. So that's government kind of proposal and also family policy right now. But anyhow, this kind of two combination of the you know, declining fertility rate and also the elderly people uh, tend to live longer. Actually, it just exacerbates Korea's kind of, uh, the aging problem. So what kind of challenges and uh, issues? So there are many problems, uh, as you already know, in, uh, in both developing countries and developed countries. 
So first of all, in the labor market, so the aging population means uh, the Korean society is going to have declining number of working age population. So we already said the, uh, the past the threshold in 2017, uh, the, the Korean's age, uh, the working age population just you know, the, uh, reached the t uh, peak point and then it's declining. And according to uh, government projection, actually we are going to experience declining population by 23. So which means Korea is going to shrink. And another one is uh, the government is also just the, uh, concerned about the very slow economic growth and also retrenchment investment. Usually the elderly tend to uh, spend less, but they tend to spend, uh, they save more, which means the domestic consumption is not going to just increase. That's another big problem. And uh, the increasing number of the aging population means government also need to pay a huge number of social welfare expenditures. So in terms of pension, government expect by 20, uh, uh, 2056, Korean pension fund will be just in the disappear basically. And also the medical insurance also, uh, we are going to see this percentage is the how much can medical expenditure utilize for the elderly population. So 2002, uh, it was around 20%, but uh, by 2009, it's over 30%. So which means, uh, the as the elderly population uh, increase, the government spend more money on the medical and the pension, uh, the medical expenditure. So this one is more the uh, macro level, national levels. What happens? So as I uh, mentioned earlier, Korea is experiencing declining uh, the the productive population, which means work age population. But the red line is elderly population increase dramatically, but children, uh, the number of children declining dramatically. So this is more than macro level, so it will affect huge social economic problems on the Korean society. And the next one is about the more uh, regional level. So the uh, left side is 2014. So this one is the percentage population over 65 years old. So this one is the, uh, the, the city level. But within uh, by 2040, so the red means there are many number of popu uh, the elderly population. So these small uh, localities, especially in rural area, they are facing the basic disappearance of the cities and municipalities. So it's more regional problems. So many uh, small municipalities in rural area, they are trying to actually promote more babies. So the reason why just that they have many elderly means, as you know, there are not many good jobs. So many young population, actually, they are living for urban area. So there are only elderly people live there. So what they wanted to do, they wanted to make local community live better, and also if they have more um, babies, they just offer some multi compensation, although it's not huge, but that's one way to attract more young population to settle down in this kind of small locality. And the other one is, uh, like China, Korea has been uh, well known for the traditional family structure, which means the third generation or even fourth generation, but over time, uh, many Korean, uh, Koreans, and, and not only just the uh, entire population, but also uh, many elderly population, they just live alone. So the, one of the uh, big problem, uh, big social problem right now, there are many unintended that because they live alone, so oftentimes they're found much later, they're that found, uh, found much later. So if you live in a uh, local community, it's much easier to be connected, but if you live in urban city, actually it's quite difficult who your neighbor, and uh, sometimes they are, they're that, is uh, was found more than let's say a couple of months later, so that's a big problem. Another big issue was okay, Korea is experiencing a rapid speed of aging, but the problem is their quality of life, especially economic quality of life, is kind of so not you know, they are uh, promising. So you can see from here, uh, Korea's kind of elderly population they suffer a lot from the poverty. So if you look at these numbers, Korea's uh, elderly population over 65 years old, they have more than, uh, uh, almost half of them, they suffer from the poverty. So the big, big issue is Korean uh, elderly population, they were not really ready for their retirement, but they just already enter the aging society. So because this kind of issue, at the same time, uh, the Korea's kind of pension is not really well prepared for just absorbing all this elderly population, so this one is uh, the uh, labor force participation and elderly versus the youth population. So elderly here means over 65 years old and youth is between uh, 15 to 24. 
So more than 30% of Korea's elderly, actually, they continue to work. But if you just look at other advanced industrial countries, that's not the case. So on the one hand, uh, people might guess the Korean elderly were not able to keep their quality of living as much as they want, so they continue to work, or they're forced to work. But at the same time, if we just look at other Asian countries, Japan is the same, and China is quite similar. Uh, many Asians, they try to stay in the labor market much longer than Europeans or Americans. So there might be some cultural factor. I don't know the effect yet, but this uh, Korea's case indicate Korean elderly just need to work, even after they retirement age. So this is more kind of social problems. Korea is notorious for its high suicide rate. But if we just take into account different age group, Koreans elderly actually, they just have a pretty high uh, suicide rate. So that's kind of all the problems, economic problems, social problems, and also even the uh, psychological problem. So how government's trying to respond to all these issues? So initially, government's trying to consider this one, the uh, combination with the aging and elderly population, aging society. So they consider if Korea was can able to turn around raw fertility, we, it will just solve the aging problem because we are going to more number of babies and also in the end more a number of the uh, working age population. However, less focus, initially less focus on the uh, aging population per se. So majority of the policy uh, responses and government expenditures focusing on how to tackle these low fertility rates. So this kind of all the, you know, the uh, plans, the first, second, and third plans, so right now under the third plan. But by time of the third plan, government is trying to focus more on the aging itself. So how we can just handle more policies and how we can just respond to this kind of the, uh, aging population. So on the one hand, the, uh, there are many different dimensions, and social welfare and social care problems. So the Korea's pension is not really good enough in terms of the uh, replacement rate. It's around 40% of the inco uh, income. But nevertheless, as I uh, showed earlier, but Korea's pension fund is going to be just you know, the, uh, run out of money. So in, uh, what COP wanted to do, okay, in, uh, they plan is they wanted to just the, um, the delay or extend their pensionable age one year uh, within the five years and another one year within five years. And the other is medical insurance, so which is led to uh, uh, Professor Ube's kind of point about the dementia issue. So government actually, the current government is trying to offer, it's called the uh, the Munjin care, which focusing on the uh, government intervention in, for the dementia. However, it's still an early stage, so we don't know how it will just moving toward. But dementia is also another big problem, and this one is sometimes uh, a middle class or the upper middle class they might just utilize institutional care, so, so they're utilizing the market. However, they are not just a really well prepared program for the you know, the uh, average our uh, average kind of uh, middle class. And the other long-term insurance care, uh, which is another uh, social care services of frail elderly. But this kind of uh, the criteria and qualification quite difficult. And also the service is quite limited. So right now the coverage is not uh, that extensive. But government is trying to focus on this kind of provision of social welfare programs uh, over time. And the other one is, as I mentioned earlier, is, uh, the labor market. So uh, government is trying to offer more employment opportunity for the elderly. Because in reality, the pension is not yet good enough for them to support themselves. So they wanted to offer more job opportunities for the elderly, more decent and stable jobs, but it's quite going to be uh, challenging. So as another option, government is trying to extend the retirement age. So they allow them to stay longer. But in Korea, and right now, uh, the retirement age is 60 years old. But many people, actually many uh, even uh, male workers, they cannot really uh, stay until their retirement age. So sometimes they, are, you know, they need to live earlier than 60 years old. So even if government just extend retirement age, there's no guarantee they can stay that age, until that age. And the other one is to uh, supplement the sh uh, shortage of a working age population. Uh, they wanted to encourage more women to participate in the labor market. So it's another source of the workforce. And the financial housing market, so the Korean people they are especially the middle aged and elderly population, their largest kind of asset is actually housing. So, but they don't have much kind of the, uh, savings. So what government offer can reverse mortgage. So they can borrow money, but you know, they as kind of utilizing their house as collateral. So once they just let it pass away, the bank will just have that uh, house. And uh, the other one is government also trying to utilize kind of industrial policy 
So they consider many technological innovation to support by government policy. So in particular, they wanted to just promote, encourage biotechnology, so which is not really uh, uh, unusual. But they try to utilize biotechnology and medical care industry. It will be another source of the, uh, the uh, profit and investment. At the same time, it will just tackle the uh, rapidly aging society problems. So the goal is uh, the aging society cannot be just avoidable. But the government is trying to utilize okay, healthy aging, so how they can make he uh, elderly population become he stay healthy and also offer them better uh, either uh, the social and uh, social economic supports. Okay, so the last slide. <laughs> so aging society, uh, like many other countries, is kind of a huge challenge. But at the same time, uh, the Korean uh, people or the uh, government consider it's a great opportunity for Korean economy and society. On the one hand, it can be source of a new industry. So some people consider this a, a growing population will create a very important business opportunity for the so-called silver industry. So that's another um, issue. However, the problem is uh, even in the Korea and the, uh, the rising inequality is a big problem. So another key dimension is even uh, we are just looking at the elderly population themselves, but there are also the uh, critical dimension along the line of the, uh, their uh, asset level. So the, uh, there's possibility for the uh, huge social economic gap between the uh, elderly with health and elderly with not health. So that will be another big challenge for the Korean society even to tackle this aging population problem. Okay, thank you so much.